Hello beautiful people and welcome to the channel A Life After Narc. My name's Debbie and I talk about all things to do with narcissistic, abusive and toxic relationships as well as looking at healing from them. And today's video, is the narcissist an energy vampire? Now I was asked this question in one of the comments on one of my previous videos and um, the gentleman asked, did I ever feel the narcissist was draining your energy during the relationship and physically attaching to you afterwards from a distance. And I think this subject really does deserve a mention because it is quite significant. But first, if you enjoy the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share with your friends and family, anyone who you think may benefit. So many of you know that I am a witch that I was a yoga instructor, I am a Reiki master and also a minister. And a lot of what I do works with energy. And I want you to remember that everything is energy. And no, Einstein did not say that. And if he did, I cannot find any reference to it. But everything is energy. All the molecules around us are moving all the time, even though we can't always see it but we can feel it. So a simple way of checking on your energy is to take your hands, perhaps place them together, give them a rub, get your hands warm, especially if it's cold, give them a rub, and then hold your hands together and you can feel a certain amount of energy between your palms. Now, if you take them wider, can you still feel that energy between the palms and wider and wider? and wider and some of you may feel this connection of energy from your palms and that can happen all over the body and the way I like to look at being connected to somebody is having a thread or a ribbon some sort of connection from your heart or solar plexus chakra that reaches out towards them and connects to them so when we've been in a relationship with a narcissist or an abusive partner, we really think that we love them. They have conned us, they have uh, manipulated us into believing that they loved us, but we know they didn't. So during that relationship, that energy is there, not just after that relationship. You may well have thought that this person was your twin flame or your soulmate. Now, that's a discussion for another um video. But I do believe that there are uh, soulmates and twin flames out there. But the narcissist wasn't that. The narcissist tried to convince you that there was and that they were your soulmate. But they weren't. And you know it now that that relationship's ended. If you're still in that relationship, watch some of these videos, not just my videos, but other people on YouTube who um, talk about these videos, who talk about this, this kind of relationship. So when two people really love each other, you can feel that energy between them. For example, a father and son or a mother and daughter. Now, I remember many, many, many years ago, I was in my late teens, and I used to go to a nightclub in Johannesburg and uh, one night I'd taken my a bag, a sort of canvas bag and a denim jacket and I'd put them into the cloakroom and the cloakroom used to give you a little ticket with the number on. Somehow somebody stole my bag and my jacket and my jacket I was really upset with because I've never found one like it since and I absolutely loved that jacket. But my mother woke up in the middle of the night and she could feel that something was wrong. And this is the connection between two people who are in touch with their energy. And it can happen in true romantic relationships, but it also happens in the narcissistic relationship. When you are in that relationship with the narc, you feel this strong bond but you also feel when the bond is breaking, perhaps when the bond or the energy is breaking down. They were using you. 
And perhaps you're waking up now and starting to see this process and starting to see, well, hang on, they've taken all my money, they've taken my home, they've taken my car, I've done everything for them and I'm getting nothing back. And then perhaps they start with the verbal abuse, the mind games, the gaslighting, and perhaps even taking it further into physical abuse. But you will feel their energy on some level. And one of the places where we really connect on energy is when we're making love. So I want you to put that to one side, though, because that is a very different kind of energy. But energy exists in all things. For example, you take a stone and you hold that stone. This is a crystal. It's a piece of rose quartz and you hold on to it. Your energy will be imparted into that crystal. Although this crystal looks solid, there are minuscule spaces between each molecule that allow that energy in. So I'm going to hold on to this through the recording of this video. Perhaps you had a suspicion that they were having an affair. You felt this. You felt this energy around you. They told you they weren't. But you were probably right. They probably were having an affair. You may feel a certain type of energy when they're lying to you, when they told you that they weren't and it could be a lie about anything. No, I didn't break that. Um, my next was brilliant at breaking things and, and would just pick something up and say, oh, this is broken. It's like, well, the last time I used it, it was working. Who used it in between? Narcissists will never own up to having broken a thing or, or you know, anything being their fault. That's just not in their nature. You could also feel when they were in a bad mood, when they were just that overwhelming darkness that surrounds them sometimes and you would tiptoe past on eggshells. And I, I would completely avoid my necks when that when I could feel that energy because I didn't want to bear the brunt of it. I haven't caused it, but I knew that if I said or did anything, I would be blamed just as you would be blamed. So you still feel connected to this narcissist, as I say, perhaps through this thread, this connection, this ribbon of energy, a bit like the placenta from a mother to a child. The more you think about them, the longer you'll be connected to them because you are expanding or expending rather energy. You're thinking about them and that energy will somehow, through energy around us, get to that person and it will still feed them not in the sense of you being there but it will still feed them so how do we cut that energy off how do we stop thinking about them well first of all i will say to you throw everything they gave you away now it might not be possible and i understand that but if you've got things that you're not sure about, put them into a box, seal that box, put it in the attic, in the garage, in the shed, somewhere where you don't have access to it. But it's time to start getting rid of that energy because every Valentine's card or birthday card that they gave you has some form of energy around it, even though from them it was a lie. Burn their cards and letters and photos. Burn them. I love getting my cauldron out and throwing lots of things into it to set on fire to break that bond. And as I see that smoke rising out of my cauldron, I visualize that smoke cutting off. And that's it. No more connection with the narcissist. Delete photos from your phone and online. Take photos out of any uh, physical albums that you have. It can be time consuming. It can be lengthy. I mean, I've got a whole, um, you know, photo album full of our hand fasting photos, which I have hopefully closed and cancelled so that they don't show up and I can't see them. And any photos that show up on on some social media sites with that said person in, I delete. By having that connection to those photos, you are still expanding energy to them. Sell or store any jewellery that they gave you. Um, many narcissists like to flatter you with gifts of shiny diamonds and gold and trinkets and so on. 
Perhaps you want to take your wedding or engagement ring and, and trade that in. I did. Best thing I ever did. Found out what a cheapskate he was. Um, but get rid of them. Get. I know that it's hard because some things that they gave you, you probably use on a daily basis. So can you get rid of that and buy something else? Or can you live with using it? Can you stop that energy and say, yep, yeah, he gave me this. Or she gave me this, but it doesn't matter because it's useful and I can use it and make it your own. Get rid of any wedding gifts. I um, thought that I'd gotten rid of everything and I've been sorting out through the garage and old paperwork and getting rid of stuff. And I found a box full of things from our hand fasting and I am going to be setting that on fire at the next full moon and I can't wait. It's in a pile. But the wedding gifts that were given to us, while I love and respect the people that gave them to us, I just can't keep them. So they're going to charity. Keep burning. You know, there are simple little things that we can do that can bring so much satisfaction. Writing their name on a piece of paper, setting it on fire. And you can do this over a, a, a pan, on the stove, over the sink. You know, you don't have to do it in a ritual way. It can be something so simple. Um, but keep burning those things. Keep cutting off that connection. When we were hand fasted, my necks and I, um, we had ribbons tied around our, our hands and our wrists as a connection. I burned those ribbons. He wasn't interested. I'd asked him to come here to burn it with me because he was obviously part of this whole process. He stood there and said, well, you seem more into this than I am. Well, I made my vows in front of my goddess and God. So yeah, I thought that being handfasted was for life, but obviously it wasn't. So I told him to F off and leave. And I would do this myself. And then again, a spell to break the ties between you. Now, a simple spell, which is it's so easy to do, is take two candles. They can be little tiny spell candles or big taper candles, whatever you want to use. Tie a thread around the two candles, place them quite far apart, light the candles. And as the candles burn down, the thread will break. Please make sure you do this in a safe area away from... Uh, fire hazards. OK, don't do this near fire hazards. But you may want to etch their name into one candle and your name into another candle. And um, you can use orange sticks. I, I get orange sticks or you can use a, um, a toothpick to score the names into the candle. And it does help to break the ties. You may need to do this repeatedly, but that's OK, because one day you will feel the end of that connection. You will start to feel that they're no longer part of you, that they're not sending you energy and you're not sending them energy. I hope this video helps. If it has, please pop some comments below. Um, I hope to see you next time. Blessed be.